The show begins with a girl named Chloe, who is on a call with her sister to tell her about her first date and their plans for the second. She hears an odd noise and goes to check, but sees no one. When she returns, someone suddenly comes to stab her to death. This is not the Stranger Things ending I expected. Two weeks earlier, a man named Nathan speaks to his wife Ava about her obsession with true crime podcasts. Later, Ava jokingly tells Nathan that she is jealous of her sister Tori for her big booty and believes Tori is getting laid more often than she is. Later, while on her job as a real estate agent, Ava listens to her favorite podcast and hears of a serial killer who killed two people and swapped their heads. Soon, she shows a home to a man named Ryan. While going through the house, she suddenly hallucinates and sees herself making love with Ryan on the bed, which startles her. When Nathan gets to his workplace, where he works as a tennis coach, his co-worker, Michelle, tells him he is getting demoted and they are giving his job to a new guy named Mason. He protests that he has helped build the organization for 17 years, but Michelle says nothing can be done about it. Meanwhile, Ava is also having a terrible day. Ryan tells her he doesn't like the home and thinks she's new at being a real estate agent. When Nathan and Ava get home, they break the bad news to each other. To make matters worse, Tori accidentally breaks the toilet, probably from her big booty. Since they're low on cash, Nathan suggests that he start a podcast about tennis, but Ava tells him to forget about it, which he finds offensive. They soon get into an argument about how far they've come from when they used to be the cool couple, and Ava mistakenly blurts out that Nathan isn't the man she married. She soon realizes her mistake, but Nathan apologizes for being a failure to her and heads out angrily. While he's driving, he screams out how much of a failure he is. Meanwhile, an ominous man watches Chloe while working as a bartender before she's murdered. Later, a plumber named Matt comes to fix their broken toilet. Before he steps in, he covers his shoe with a blue cover, as is customary for plumbers. He mentions that he's been a big fan of Nathan since when he used to play professional tennis, and Nathan tells him he coaches now. When their toilet problem turns out to be more expensive than expected, Nathan offers to give Matt some tennis lessons in exchange for his payment. After one of their training sessions together, Nathan tells Matt how most of the women he coaches now focus on the new guy Mason. Soon after, Mason comes to apologize to Nathan about the board's decision to give him his job and mentions how he's been talking to the board about keeping him as an elder in the organization. Nathan angrily tells him he doesn't need it and grabs the fence so hard he doesn't notice blood gushing out of his hands. That night, Ava talks to some of her friends about the murder stories. Tori soon heads out to have a date with some guy she met on Tinder. At the bar, Matt tells Nathan about how he fought so long for his marriage before it ended, but eventually realized it was pointless and he should have just let it die. At their home, all of Avo's friends tell her they are having affairs to keep their marriage alive, which really shocks her. At the bar, Nathan buys a drink from Chloe and they have a quick chat. Matt tells him that Chloe is into him, but he doesn't believe it. Matt takes Nathan home after he gets drunk. When Ava tries to have a conversation with the drunk Matt, he sleeps off and she wonders what's going to become of their marriage. Later at the bar, Nathan bumps into Chloe again, who doesn't seem to remember him and goes to speak to another guy. He looks at her with a bit of anger in his eyes. Shortly after, Chloe is murdered. Sometime later, Ava snoops through Matt's laptop and finds Chloe's Instagram account. She gets angry but later finds out she was killed last night by the serial killer, which startles her. When Nathan comes home, she questions him about Chloe and he reveals that he googled her because he found out she had died after bumping into her last night. Ava gets interested in the murder story and says the police think it was done by an infamous serial killer named the West Side Ripper. Later, while she's out with her friends, Ava learns that the killer left something in Chloe's home and drives home like a maniac. She finds Nathan and Matt at home talking about something and stops the conversation to ask Nathan to see her privately. She shows Nathan that the news says the serial killer had left two blood-soaked blue shoe covers, similar to the one Matt uses. Nathan believes Ava is being hysterical from all the murder podcasts she's listening to, but Ava tells him that Matt had shown up this morning with some scratch marks on his arm from a cat, but Nathan says Matt doesn't have a cat. Ava asks Nathan what he knows about Matt, and he reveals that Matt had left his town two years ago after someone got murdered in his building. They both get hysterical and Google the details of the unsolved murder case in his town, which has them convinced that Matt is the West Side Ripper. If he is, I hope this daddy chokes me to death. Sorry I got carried away. Matt suddenly approaches them to ask Nathan what he wanted to tell him, but Nathan spots a hammer in his hands and says he's forgotten. When Matt heads out, they lock their doors and Nathan tries to call 911. Ava stops him from placing the call and says they have a great chance to create their own podcast based on Matt's story by forcing him to make a podcast with them or go to jail. Ava mentions how bad their lives are going and explains that this is their lucky break, but Nathan refuses. 
Nathan tries to call the police back but hesitates. Later, Nathan takes Matt to a solitary place to reveal that he knows who he is and to make him a proposition. In a flashback, Matt takes his son Ollie to a store. He soon receives a call from Nathan about his broken toilet, after a friend referred him. While on the call, he bumps into Chloe, who seems to like him. Over the next few weeks, he stalks her until he goes to her apartment to stab her. In the present, Nathan tells Matt about their proposition and says he's set up an automatic message that'll go to the police to match his DNA to the blue cover shoes left on the scene if he hurts them or anyone else. Matt tries to deny it and walk away, but Nathan tells him he has 48 hours to respond. While he drives away, Nathan beats himself up for messing up the proposition. Ava comes to ask about the proposition, he freaks out and tells her that Matt is probably working on a way to kill them. Ava tells him there's no need to overreact because she's certain Matt will get back to them and they just need to focus on their work. Later, while at work, some detectives named Quincy and Carol in come to see Nathan to ask him about Chloe. He pretends not to know her, but they show him a picture, and he agrees, pretending he just recalled her face. They ask him to get to them if he has any information, and they ask him about Matt. At a party with Ava's friends and their spouses, Ava notices Nathan is worried. She finds him drinking, and he tells her about the police. She tells him not to chicken out because the pressure means they are onto something big. Immediately, Matt calls but Nathan cuts the call and tells her they are going to the police. Later that night, when their friends ask, Nathan admits he lost his position as coach at work. They try to cheer him up, but he tells them he's fine and will and back on his feet. Moments later, he goes to the bathroom mirror and calls himself a loser. When he steps out, he overhears Ruby talking to Ava about how ambitious and bold the other men are in their career paths. The next morning, Nathan goes to meet Matt at a diner. Matt tells him he believes he's not bold enough for this since he took time to call back. But Nathan tells him he's totally in. At Ava's work, her boss kindly tells her he has to take her off selling houses and back to selling apartments. At the diner, Nathan tells Matt he figured out his identity all on his own to protect Ava. But Matt finds it hard to believe it. Matt advises him to drop this because it'll end badly and there are better ways to save his terrible marriage. But Nathan refuses. Soon, Matt agrees to his proposition on the condition that they remain friends. When Nathan breaks the news to Ava, she gets so excited and turned on that he could make such a bold move. They make wild love at her workplace. Sometime later, Ava rents out a warehouse where Nathan will be recording the podcast with Matt. When Nathan heads out to go see Matt for their first episode, Matt comes to see Ava at home. Matt tells Ava that Nathan told him she broke one of the pipes, and he's come to check it. She becomes very tense, and he follows her in. He soon reveals to her that he believes Ava was the one who figured out Matt was the killer, but Ava denies this. He soon picks up a knife and asks her again. At the warehouse, Matt brings Ava with him and tells them they need to be honest with each other to move forward. He tells them the location has too much noise that the police can't track, and he'll get them a new location. He informs them that he used Nathan as his alibi when the police came to question him, and Nathan will have to cover up for him since they're partners now. Days later, Matt calls and takes them to the home of a very rich couple whose toilet he had fixed a while back. They both partly believe he must have killed the owners, but he tells them not to ask. He takes them to the garage with new gear and shares some ideas about how to market the podcast. They start recording him speaking about the details of his murders, and they hide their identities. Matt reveals that the public only knows about seven of his murders, but he's actually killed over 20 people. After Ava edits the podcast recording, Matt comes to Nathan's workplace to tell him he made a new edit of the podcast because he hated the one they did, and he needs to protect his brand. Matt goes to pick up Ollie, who is playing with Michelle's daughter. Michelle's daughter seems to like Matt, so she asks her mom if they can have a play date with Ollie and his dad. Meanwhile, Ava speaks with Matt and wonders if he really killed 20 people. Soon, Matt stabs her. It turns out to be a nightmare, and Nathan comes to tell her about Matt's new edits, which annoys her. At the diner, they both meet with Matt to negotiate ideas for how the podcast will look. Matt eventually insists on all of his ideas and even chooses a server, and Nathan and Ava have no choice but to agree. After Matt uploads the first episode, Michelle comes to ask Nathan about Matt because of the play date coming up. He gets tense and sternly tells her he doesn't know Matt much and that she needs to be careful around strangers. Michelle thinks Matt is hot, so all his words fall on deaf ears. Same girl, same. He is one yummy piece of, never mind. When Ava comes to check on him, he tells her he doesn't want to be an alibi for Matt because the cops keep coming back and he wants to be a good example to their future kid. When the cop approaches them again, they run away and find out they have forgotten the alibi. When they get close, Ava runs away and leaves him with the cops. They ask him about the alibi, and he covers up for Matt. Ava comes to tell him she's so proud of him, and they decide to check the download numbers for their podcast and its shit. 
just like my YouTube channel, in Las Vegas, at an event called CrimeCon organized by serial killer crime podcasters. Nathan and Ava come to learn the basics of the trade after their podcast only got 113 downloads. When the show begins, two of the podcasters, the Lipinski sisters, invite the mother of the recently murdered Chloe on stage. Soon, Matt comes to join them and sits behind Nathan and Ava. The podcasters soon invite the only lady to survive an attack by the West Side Ripper, named Dahlia, and Matt is surprised to see her there. Dahlia says she kicked the West Side Ripper in the ball sack and managed to get away. After the conference, Matt tells them he's never seen Dahlia in his life, and she's using his name for popularity and to make money. He tells them they need to discredit her to save their brand. Later, while they are by the pool, Ruby, who has come to have an affair in Vegas, approaches Ava and thinks she and Nathan are having a three-way with Matt. Honestly, that's hot. While at CrimeCon, Ava runs into Ryan, and they find out they are both fans of a crime show. When they head to room alone, they start to make love. It turns out to be another fantasy of Ava, who is almost drowning in the bathtub. While Ava Nathan and Matt are in an elevator, Dahlia suddenly walks in and joins them, but she doesn't notice Matt since she's on her phone. Matt stares at Dahlia and doesn't hide his face. Dahlia turns around, but Nathan stands in front of her to block Matt's face. When she gets to her stop, Dahlia steps out. Later, Matt stalks Dahlia and follows her around. He walks up to her while she's in the bar and introduces himself as a fan, and she obviously doesn't recognize him. He reveals to her he knows he's a fake, who's just stealing money and fame. When he threatens that her lie of being a victim will soon become reality, she starts to cry as he walks away from her. On the ground floor, Ava and Nathan go meet with their friends. Suddenly, Dahlia falls from the top floor and gets impaled on an iron umbrella. I wish Matt impales me in the future, just not with an umbrella. What do you guys think of the show so far? Should we cover the last four episodes? Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.